Hey, everybody. If you're like me, there have been times in your life when you have felt God was so distant from you and you just didn't feel him anymore. You felt as if he had left you or that you had simply just drifted away from him. Even your prayers didn't seem as if they were reaching him. This is not unusual in the life of a believer. And I want to let you know today that there is a way to remove the distance between you and God and for you to grow close, closer to God again. Join us for today's episode. Hey everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Biblical Guidance for Living. We are so glad that you're here. I'm with my sisters, Ilana, Tammy, and Sid. And we are here and we are going to be talking about how we can promote a lifestyle of faith in Jesus Christ through God's word. So join us for today's episode. Hey ladies, we are going to be talking about, I think, a very important topic, how we can grow closer to God. And this is important for us, whether we are brand new Christians or old Christians, because every once in a while in our lives, we experience a season, I'll call it our dry season, where we just don't feel God. So what is going on there? So James 4, 8 tells us, come close to God and God will come close to you. So what's going on there is God has not moved. We have. And we need to recognize that and understand that so we will know what to do to come back into relationship with him. God never moves away from us. Hebrews 13, 5 tells us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So once we belong to him, he's with us forever. It is us who do the moving. And we do that through our actions and the way we live. So he is able to help us to be restored back to relationship with him. But first we got to identify what the problem is. And then we need to take the problem to him and have him help us correct it. So we're going to talk about four questions you should ask yourself if you're feeling distant from God. And we will share with you some solutions on how to restore the relationship with God based on your answers. So the first question I want to ask and throw out to our ladies today is, have you thought about who you are exalting in your life? Is it you or is it God? James 4.10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. So how does not obeying that particular direction cause us to move away from God? And then what can we do to fix it? Okay, Angie, that is a very good question. And um, we can, you know, become so consumed with the world, other people, and our own personal agendas that we start pushing God to the end of our to-do list. And the Bible tells us, as you said in James 4.10, to humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. So only God knows what he created us to do and what he wants us to achieve. So we have to change our focus from it's all about me, Sonetta, and reconnect with God. We have to rekindle our relationship with him. So in order to have a closer and deeper connection with God, we need to spend time with our father, talking to him and asking him what he wants for us, what he wants for us. And as we spend time with God, we will clearly hear his voice speaking to us in our spirit. And we should respond with humility and obedience. He knows what he has designed us to do. He knows which job we should accept and the job that is not for us, who we should date and who we should not and who we should avoid like the plague, which ministry we should be serving in and which one does not best utilize our spiritual gifts and natural abilities. God has all of the answers, you all, because of this one simple truth. He knows the plans he has for us and he knows what he has equipped and empowered us to do. We cannot thoughtlessly and arrogantly chart just chart out our own life as though God is not the captain of the ship. When we are conceived, when uh, when we were conceived and then took our first breath on this planet, God knew exactly what he designed us to do. So if anyone is currently feeling disconnected from God, that God is not commu communicating and communing with you the way he used to, that he is not opening the door you have been knocking on for months or years, consider the fact that he has another door for you and it has your name on it. 
We have to spend time in prayer with God. We have to ask him to reveal the direction he wants us to take, what he has impassioned us to do, what he wants to achieve through us for his glory. We have to intentionally spend time with God so we can grow our relationship with him. So we will know when it's his voice speaking and not our voice. When we humble ourselves before God and ask him to show us the direction in which we should travel and the doors we should walk through, we will not make the wrong decisions. Once we decide to stop being arrogant and begin to live our lives with humility, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we cannot even contain. Yes, he will. If we are humble. Okay. Thank you, Sid. So when we are um, exalting someone else or something else, what are some of the things that we can exalt, the things we ought to avoid, the things we, we do in a daily walk that we should examine and, and really determine if that is causing us to stumble in this area? So I think anytime, um, I know for myself, sometimes when I get anxious about something that I have to do, it's because I am putting me before God, like I am making it all about me and making that the focus. Um, and so when I recognize that I'm doing that, I have to stop and I do have to recognize that it's all about Jesus. It's his strength that I'm working in. It's his, his, uh, him empowering me to do the things he's called me to do. And it's not on me. And immediately when I start to realize that I start to relax and the pressure comes off. And I can be like, OK, God, now I've got things in the right order, you know, like he is in front and it's all about him, you know. And, you know, his word is so good because scripture is full of the things that God will do for us when we are humble, when we mm -hmm. humble ourselves. Um, so, Second Corinthians 715 says, now my ears will be open and my, my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to your prayers offered in this place. And that's right. Follows right after. If you turn from your wicked ways, Praise you know, Lord. humble yourself, <laughs> then right. this, I will hear you. I will see you. I will hear you. And so I think sometimes we think it's all about, I'm sorry. I think it's all about me, but um, <laughs> it really is about the Lord. And when I put him in the right place and put myself, I humble myself to him, things always go better. Always mm -hmm. go better. Thank you for that. So humbling ourselves is is essential for us to have the right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And then the other question I'd like our viewers to ask, and we can ask ourselves as well, if we're having or struggling in this area, is who are we actually obeying? John 14, 21 says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. So what does that say about our relationships when we when we seem far away from God? What's going wrong there? And then what needs to happen? Well, that's another good question. And typically it's um, it goes back to what you just asked. Who are you obeying? You know, is your life committed to God's control? And then are you following God's advice and directions? I mean, we seek to obey and understand his word and will above our desires. That's what we're supposed to do. That's when we are obeying God. And if you read Psalms 119, 11, the psalmist acknowledges, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if you are obeying God, his words are in your heart and it needs to be in your heart because wherever you go, your heart is going with you. So the word of God is with you every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And the word of God is good and we need to obey it because it keeps us from straying away from God. It keeps us from sinning. And that's something that God does not want us to do. So who are you obeying? If you're following the word of God, 
And you know what God expects, which means you have to be reading his word to know and to follow him. Then God's in control of your life. If you're just following the advice of the world or you're reading the self-help books or you're calling a friend every time you need help, then you're really not obeying God. You're really um, obeying the ways of the secular world and it won't get you anywhere. So if you want to know, you have to obey the word of God in order to get closer to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other comments about that, ladies? Okay. So obeying God is essential for our relationship to to grow close to God. And then what about sin? Because this is like the elephant in the room. You know, Mm -hmm. sin is something that will we know will separate us from God. And what I really want us to focus on is, yes, we all sin. Yes. And we can repent. But I want us to think about godly sorrow versus continually asking God's forgiveness for the same sin over and over, because this could drastically separate us from him. James 4, 8 says, wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So how does this impact our relationship with God? And then what can we do to, to correct this particular area? Yeah, you know, um, you know, as we all grow in our relationship with God, we get a deeper understanding of what things are and what they mean. And so in my life, I thought repent was like, okay, I forgive you, Lord, I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. And then I find it two minutes later or no, not two minutes, at least an hour later, I'm I'm doing it. (laughs) Wait a little while. (laughs) (laughs) Little while, little while. Um, But what... um, what I found is that you really need this repentance is a thing where you have a change of mind. It's not as simple as just saying, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Forgive me, Lord. But it is, should be a real change. And that when we do sin against God, we should be really sorrowful. We should real that thing should hurt us, you know. Um, and James four, you said you read verse eight, but verse nine says, "Grieve, mourn, wail, yeah. turn your laughter into mourning, uh-huh. and your joy to gloom." I mean, this is when you are really sorry about yeah. the sin you have right. committed, right? And and how that hurt our God, you know, and how that's not what he wants for us in our lives and that we need to really turn from that thing and, and be sorry and mean it. And then ask the Lord to help us, you know, um, to stay focused, to stay away from that thing. And, and for me, it's just like what I was talking about earlier. It was like, um, if I know the Lord is in control then why am I making it about me? I repent of that, Lord, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 every time, you know, I'm turning away from that. Like, I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. When I feel it coming on me, I'm like, no, no, no. This is behind you. This is not what uh, you think anymore. God, mm-hmm. you have changed your mind about that. It is God that's going to get you through. Not anything that you're going to do, Alana, but God. Mm-hmm. So that's I think cool. we really have to be sincere about that. And we, when we say it, we need to, it should change us. We should be sincere, mourn that thing, and, um, you know, really turn from that. Yeah. And, you know, Alana, we have to be sincere because God knows everything. I mean, people can fool us, but God knows. So you might as well be um, sincere. But I think you grow, like you said, in repentance. You grow in sorrow. You grow to understand. And for me, everything is a heart thing. It's like when you sin, you have hurt your father. You've hurt mm-hmm. the most important person mm-hmm. in your life. And in, in actuality, for me, I'm embarrassed mm-hmm. to the point that I hurt that bad. Now, when I, now I wasn't like you ladies. When I first repented, I repented and I just kind of did it again and repented because I didn't understand. You know what I'm saying? But when you are sorrowful, you are conscious about not making that decision again. It is with you. It's embedded in you. So you may start to do it, but then you find yourself stopping. So that's when you know you're 
sorrowful, but, but that only happens when you grow closer to God and that relation with God and the love you have for God and you want to please him, you want to obey him, you want to be humble, you know, you, you want all of that for him. And it's not about you, right, ladies? Right. It's all about him. And Angela, that's when that sorrowful repentance comes in. Yes, yes. I that is so so good, Tammy, because it is so important for us to recognize, I think you said it very well, who God is. Until we get that picture of who he is and that when we sin, we sin against him directly. We may have thought we did something that was happy, made us happy or, you know, pleased us or whatever, but at the end of the day, we have sinned only against him and he is the one that we have to repent to and change and move forward with. Otherwise, he's not going to hear us. He's not going to to be with us. So Mm -hmm. that is a huge one, okay? And then the last question I want us to think about and ask ourselves, who are we spending time with? If we're feeling God is distant and far away and he just isn't there and I'm not seeing him working, what are we doing that's causing that to happen? Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So what does seeking first the kingdom, how does that help to enhance your relationship with God? What does that look like? So let's talk a little bit about that. So first of all, when we seek the kingdom of God, we put God first in everything. You know, it's so easy today to just get lost. I'm telling you, lost in in um, Facebook and Twitter and, <laughs> you know, I don't know, social events and sports and all sorts of things that are out there. We follow the lives of our favorite celeb- celebrities. We know more about them than we know about Jesus sometimes, don't we? <laughs> we can tell you what they're doing, what they're thinking and all of that. And that's not good. So there are only 24 hours in a day. That's all we're given. How many, I want us to honestly answer, not out loud necessarily, how many hours in the day are we spending with God? Is it five minutes? Is it zero? I don't know. You can answer that question. But if we want to have a relationship, we have to spend time. There is no relationship grows without us spending time with that person and learning about them and knowing them intimately. They know, God knows us already. He knows every single thing about us because he knew us before we were ever born. But we need to learn who he is, who and what he represents, what he expects of us, what his purpose for us is, all of the things that um, make a relationship strong. We need to recognize how much he loves us and cares for us and has our best interest at heart. We need to know him very well. So if we're not spending time with him and we've replaced him with all of the technology, all of the fun times, all of the good things, and we ignore him, we're going to be separated from him. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's so easy sometimes to um, get caught up in other things. Um, And I think it's, it's easier to do when your relationship with him is not that strong, you know, like Mm -hmm. when you don't really spend time with him, then it's no big deal. But as you spend more time with him, it's like, oh no, I want to spend more time with him. You know, it's like, That's right. I want to spend yeah. more time uh, understanding who he is and help and getting his help to understand who I am, you know, mm-hmm. and what's in what I need to do for my life and, and stuff. So I think the more you grow closer, like Tammy was saying, it's about that relationship. The more you grow closer to him, the more you want to spend time with him. And these other things are just so trivial, you know, such a waste of time. Um, and really doesn't do anything for us, honestly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And I can promise you, and I think you ladies can testify, the more time you spend with him in prayer, in Bible study, Mm -hmm. just just learning who he is and understanding him, the greater your love for him grows and the greater your appreciation for who he is. Mm -hmm. And you only have that if you have that relationship with him, right? Right. So any other comments about any of this? Andrew, I wanted to say that you, what you said was powerful, that statement, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And what I love about <laughs> my God, because I'm going to own him for mine. I know he's yours too, but I own him as my God, that he loves us so much that if we just seek him first, 
then he'll give us the other desires of our heart. So why are we not seeking them? Right. I mean, that's the question I guess I want to ask the audience. You know, he asked you to seek him first. And then he said, if you seek him first, well, he's going to do what's right by you. Everybody else tries to do right by you. But God's the only person we know for sure that does do right by you. Right. So all these other things that we want, you know, I just love him. And I just for him to say he'll give me the desires on my heart, because sometimes y'all, I don't, sometimes my desires aren't what I need. (laughs) That's correct. That's correct. (laughs) We will make big mistakes in that area. (laughs) And I just want to add one last thing too, um, for everybody listening, spending time with God does not necessarily mean that you are sitting down in a chair in your home, everything is off and you're sitting there talking to him. When you're in your car driving to work, you can be having a conversation with him. I mean, you can even be, because I do that. I am a verbal person. So I would just speak out loud whatever is on my heart, on my mind. So I'm saying you can find slivers in your day. It doesn't have to be just 10 mm-hmm. minutes, you know, consistent 10 minutes. Whenever the Holy Spirit prompts you to just say, Lord, you know, you know how I'm feeling today. Help me get through this. And I, whatever it is to just stay connected with him, we can do it throughout the day. That does not have to be a specific time period in your house, in your car, going out to get your mail. Whenever the Holy Spirit prompts you, stop, drop and talk to him mm-hmm. and just have a conversation and connect with him. That's mm-hmm. what I'm finding. I'm doing more and more the older I get, especially <laughs> too, probably. <laughs> yes. that's, that's good. That's good. So so if you are feeling distant from God, if you are feeling like he's far away, if you are feeling that there your relationship even needs to be rekindled or it needs to grow stronger, I would ask and we would ask you to really examine yourselves. Ask yourself who you're exalting. Ask yourself who you are obeying. Ask yourself, do you have unrepentant sin in your life? And ask yourself, Who or what am I spending most of my time on? And then do the things that the only he can do, the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome each one of those and draw closer to him every single day. And that's what we want to do day by day by day, grow closer to God again. Okay. So thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. We hope it was helpful to you to grow in your relationship with God. If you liked it, please hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the um, notification so you know when we are putting out another episode. And please comment if this was helpful to you in any way. We would love to hear back from you. So thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you did. And we will see you on our next episode of Biblical Guidance for a living. Thank you.